Hi, beautiful humans. Welcome to this reading. We are taking a look at what is going to happen in your situation. How is it most likely to turn out or unravel for you so that you can be aware of it, so that you can use your gifts well, so that you can face the day, you know, we're taking a look at what is going to happen in your situation. So, okay, welcome to my channel. This is Do You Tarot, and I do pick a card readings. So all I'm going to need from you all is to feel your way into which one of the four groups or the four decks you see here that you feel most drawn to. And then once you are aware of that, you can head to the timestamp in the description of this video. It'll fast forward you to your messages. These are general, meaning that every group is meant for a whole lot of people. So take what resonates, leave the rest for other people. And they're also timeless, meaning that when this video finds you and you click on it, that's when you're meant to hear these messages, okay? Group number one, just for your reference, this is the Kauai Tarot. Group number two, New Moon Tarot. Group three, Morgan Greer Tarot deck. And group four, the Modern Way Tarot. So one, two, three, four, feel your way, trust your intuition, your psychic awareness. Also, you know, if there are significant numbers in the timestamps, go for that. Whatever resonates with you, hit the timestamp, fast forward. I'll see you there in your messages about what's going to happen in your situation. Hi, beautiful humans in group number one. You all were drawn to this deck, the Kauai Tarot deck. So these are your messages all about what's going to happen in your situation. I'm going to start with some cards from your deck that you chose and we'll see a little bit more about this. I'm going for six cards, one more. There we go. And let's take a look at the bottom of the deck as well. We have the Tower card on the bottom of the deck. Okay, your tarot cards, we have the nine of pentacles as well as the seven of wands. I feel like you've learned what, <sighs> I'm, I'm hearing the words you've learned how to get along by doing what you've needed to do to get by. Let's see a bit more about this. We have the Seven of Pentacles as well as the World card. And you've done, I, I feel like the fruits of your labor, the labors, are about to truly come around. It, it's like your efforts to energize yourself, protect yourself, keep, keep to yourself, you know, what is right for you. Um, the tower card in the past, bottom of the deck energy is always like what's building your reading. So, you know, what has already occurred and what has already happened. You've had to deal with things that rocked you and shook you, maybe came out of the blue, confused you, or just confronted your reality in certain kinds of ways that just like literally shook how you are perceiving things or like it kind of like forced you to have to change and it feels like there's a specific way that you had to change that's showing up in this nine of pentacles and seven of wands you had to do a whole lot more for you like independently as an individual than maybe what had occurred in the past or what feels like is likely to occur in the future the world card is right here right next to the seven of pentacles which is letting me know that that whole kind of phase of your life is coming to a really really nice conclusion for you a logical end is what I'm sensing and feeling because the seven of pentacles is like you put the work in and you, you reap what you sow. You harvest what you've been working for. You're at the pinnacle of those kinds of efforts where you've been, you know, working for you and you've been, you know, securing you. It feels like those are the, the abundance or the bounty or the prosperity or the benefits that you're about to receive is like you've got you secure. You've got you, you know, there. What are these last two cards? We have the moon as well as the nine of cups. I'm getting the vibes of financial freedom or just freedom overall, like coming in big time. 
Like you knew you needed to do some efforts, some labor, some hard work, and you knew you were gonna need to defend it and like go your own way. So I'm getting that energy of this world card right here is like never again will I work for another person. I'm gonna take ownership of my income, be my own boss, start my own business. Success is how this is likely to work out, your situation right here. Like, I also want to translate this into, like, relationships, but I feel like maybe relationships might have caused your tower moment. Like, I don't know, you were in, like, a committed partnership, you know, relying on each other or your family. And then some kind of deep, dark secret came out and then it just, like, busted what you knew stability and security in. It busted it apart and then you're like, God... I'm on my own. I'm feeling that big energy of I'm going to have to do this alone. I'm going to have to do this for myself. And I'm, I'm literally seeing you in the past, like hiking up your boots, putting on your big girl, big boy pants as much as I hate to say that. I hate that. Those words coming out of my mouth just feel vile. Anyway, you got to work. You did what you needed to do. You did what you had to do despite the hassle of it and despite the territory that you were treading in that was really kind of harmful or toxic to you to have to be so independent and stuff like that. But what I feel like is how this is likely to work out is when you have that independence, then it feels like you're going to go through the motions of like letting your heart space take flight. I literally feel a whole lot of freedom in your cards. Freedom. Once you've got the bottom line secured for yourself and for, you know, those who are reliant on you. Once you've got that secured, that's right around the corner. That's this seven of pentacles in the world. Then the moon and the nine of cups is like, how do you want to enjoy it? I really feel like this is also retirement energy and how your situation is likely to work out is kind of not the calamities of the past where like the stock market crashes just before you're likely to, you know, uh, or I don't know, cash in your 401k or something like that. Or like um, all of a sudden social security in the United States isn't there anymore, you know, <laughs> like all those kinds of calamity things. Um, it just really feels like I'm reading into your cards. Like if you're at that point, this might be like you get to early retire, <laughs> like at the age of 30 <laughs> or something like that. And then it's the, it's like, what do you want to do? Freedom will feel differently than how you feel now. And, and that's, that's what the moon card is talking about. It's like, once you really actually step into that reality and you're like, shit, I did secure it for myself. I do have this reliable self, you know, thing in my material world. Like it's my house, my living situation, like my income, you know, it's my source of my resources. Then comes this whole like further more emotional wish fulfillment kind of energy of like, how do you want to spend your time what makes you happy? You've been working really, really hard and put in the time for that. Now let's transition into emotional fulfillment with all of those resources. Do you want to travel the world? Do you want to get in the garden? You know, whatever it is. Um, do you want to do some charity? We have unfolding as well as gratitude. Jeez. Wow, these two cards are so like vibrant and pretty to showcase like what is likely to occur is literally the vibrant unfolding of your situation into like its full blossoming or blossomed potential, like complete like unveiling of the whole rainbow that was promised, you know, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, this gratitude card, it shows like you might be in the moment in time right now in your situation, you might be still on the inside, still bearing the burden of <clears throat> excuse me, having to suffer or struggle through your situation with whatever mindset you've needed to adopt in order to like, you know, strengthen yourself to get to the point where you know you're headed right outside the window. What is likely to occur for you all that is the way that this is likely to go is that, you know, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, the sun shining and coming out um, after the storm, you know, your, your situation is resolved. 
you, you are stable, you are secure, your finances and your resources have worked themselves into like a lasting stability for you, all these kinds of things. I also like how the gratitude card, it just makes me feel very like full of emotions and the moon and the nine of cups is all about, you know, we're going to be feeling some feelings here next. We have your next cards, fixed, action, momentum, dedication. God, I feel like, like in a lot of ways, you've been like kind of in a mode of being a square box as in, I have to do this. I have to keep going. You've been fixed in this momentum, the actions that you've been taking and the dedication that you've been serving toward them and where you're headed is a lot more curvy, <laughs> a lot more like, like, ooh. like you had to be like so sharp and edged and like, I just have to keep it going. We have Pluto with regeneration, rebirth and transformation. That is literally exactly what I'm seeing in your cards is like a whole regeneration of that emotional kind of availability in your world and in your life where you get to like have fun and enjoy yourself and a transformation of your situation working hard is paying off working hard will lead to your emotional wish fulfillment that is the the transformation of your situation and then we have scorpio with deep intense and transformative transformation transformative i really feel as if you might like i mean this is a little added thing i feel a lot of positivity in your cards and i am i'm not veering away from that i also feel like you're going to need to be going through some deep healing and understanding. It's like if you do get that financial freedom, then I almost feel like you might be experiencing some kinds of symptoms of why did it have to be so hard or getting to know yourselves all over again. Scorpio energy is like, go deep or go home, man. <laughs> we're going to all the way to the bottom of the ocean and we're going to see all the creatures in the abyss and understand them <laughs> and then we can come back to the surface um that's right here with the moon card uh pluto is scorpio energy isn't it i don't know enough about that um yeah i really feel like this is going to be a part of it where you're going to kind of get to explore like what it meant to you like physically or something like that to have to work so hard for yourself you might be dealing with post-traumatic stress you might be dealing with certain things of like I don't know certain biophysical things like inside of you to where like your digestion improves or you can you can like heal yourself a whole lot more and then we have waxing gibbous moon as I'm saying this kind of stuff nurturing patience refinement Okay, in a very sincere way, I know that when you reach this pinnacle of the success that you're going for in the physical provision, you know, physical provision, being satisfied, I know that what is going to occur with all of these kinds of cards, I'm not even shying away from it now, is you're just going to kind of really have to face what it all means or what the world means or what life means you might have an existential awakening or two and you might really get to hone in on and focus on what is truly mattering to you and then devote your heart space to that a whole lot more and it might take a little bit of time it might take some re refinement it's kind of like all of a sudden um like a, a person gets like super super like i'm, I'm thinking of very young athletes um who get like super recruited and they get like super super rich very quickly and then we all kind of make fun of what they end up spending money on because it's just like the flashiest thing and like they should have invested that money if they wanted it to last you know isn't there a documentary about that how like athletes go bankrupt or something like that i swear i have heard about that but you know it's, it's that kind of energy of like when it finally arrives, you're going to have to really hone in on and touch base with like, wait, what do I actually want? Like, <coughs> excuse me, I have to cough. <coughs> <coughs> What's real for you and harmonized with you, with your emotions, once you actually get there, like to that, that house that is yours, to that like, you know, fixed sustainable income that satisfies you 
you know? Okay, the next two we have making a difference. My inner light shines far and wide. Here we get a whole lot more with this Pluto Scorpio <laughs> Gibbous Moon kind of mentality of like, what do you have inside of you? I feel like with this Nine of Pentacles, Seven of Wands, Seven of Pentacles, you've been working like against the forces that are pushing on you. Like, like you have to, like, I mean, economically speaking, we don't really give each other or anybody any reprieves here. <laughs> like, you have to keep going. <laughs> like, there's something about the making a difference in your inner light that feels like this added thing that's going to come out of you in the future. It's going to be like, maybe something along the lines of, I don't want anyone to have to go through what I've gone through. It's feeling a bit charitable, that's for sure, to be honest. But it feels like you're going to challenge yourself to emotionally make some differences in the world around you or simply just in your life and responding to your emotions a whole lot more because you've got that resources to back you up to be able to do that. This literally feels like if you need to get into your own living situation, your own home space, you get there and then you're like, God, I have so much to process. And now that I have my safe space, now that I can be a blob on the carpet on the floor <laughs> for a while if I need to, here we go. Now that I can spend three hours in a bathtub when I want to, <laughs> here we go. We're going to be processing some things. And then we also have hearing messages from spirit. I am a clear channel for messages from spirit. I feel like this is something different. Hold on. I'm going to need to get these cards to interpret this. But what I was first sensing is that whole, I feel like you guys might have like a secondary spiritual awakening or you get to do some shadow work. So you're going to be hearing some messages from your spirit, you know, like, um, but I feel like this is something that is different than just that. Um, so I'm going to get two more cards and see how they relate to this. Um, okay. Three more cards. Strength, as well as this trust card, and then sadness. Okay. <laughs> um, it's the emotional quality of it, that's for sure. Again, this rain inside the window, or yeah, inside the window, it made me feel like it's talking about sadness, Scorpio energy, moon energy. It really feels as if your emotions are going to be speaking very loudly and you're going to have to process some sorrow. That's for sure. Maybe about like what it took out of you to get to the strength pillar position. To be a provider for self and others is being that pillar for literally you and or society. It's not the easiest thing. Um, it requires a whole lot of, <laughs> a lot, a lot of this fixed, you know, action, momentum, dedication kind of stuff, discipline, uh, never ending <laughs> efforts, you know, until you get there kind of idea. Yeah, I like this trust card because it just really feels like you're moving into that embrace of being able to like trust yourself, trust the world around you, trust your heart space um living from your heart space a whole lot more and I just really feel like saying because this trust card always makes me think that with the visual on it is that you're gonna have some relationships how this is all likely to work out your situation you're gonna have some relationships that you can truly lean on like you can truly trust you can trust them you can trust yourself in them Maybe because you can trust your own abilities with resources or with your living situation, whatever this nine of pentacles is for you guys, the material world being secure for you, your pillar intact and sustained. And then you get this added benefit of being able to listen to your heart space and your emotions and process that. It's only leading to the ability or the availability of being in relationships that are so well connected Oh, it's really nice. Okay, your last two cards, we have small things. And I'm feeling this energy of like, please do keep going. Um, and then I uh, also plants. Wow. Um, obviously, please do keep going. You know that already. Um, 
you definitely know that already. And this is like a huge energy of like, this is how it is likely to unfold for you. So if you keep going at it, it's going to work out in this kind of way. The small things in the plants feels like when you get there, take it slow, do little gestures, little moments, little efforts so that you can align with feeling, align with truth, align with understanding. Um, there's a rest card in this deck, but it didn't come out yet. But I feel like with this plants, it's like you're again, this energy of transformation, transformative transformation. It feels like you've had to be maybe in predator mode or more like an animal pursuing and engaging and claiming this plants is like this. How this is likely to unfold is you get to be more in the receptive mode of photosynthesizing and connecting beneath the soil and sharing nutrients. It feels so much more emotively relationship connective kind of energy with this plants card. So it's just this small things is take it slow, do little gestures at first, like be mindful about those kinds of things and do what feels right to you in the moment in time when you get there, when you know that you are there. Because it's in doing things like that, that further unfolding of like spirit, heart, potential, purpose, energy, wisdom, grace, they all get to unfold inside of you and outside of you as well in your life. This is a worthy pursuit. And you you literally, I'm he hearing and seeing in the cards that you get to heal after after making it and doing it and accomplishing it. You get a whole lot of benefit from this pursuit. So yeah. That's it though. I'm done. <laughs> That's what I have for you all. Group number one. How do you feel? If you feel good and if this reading has helped you, give it that thumbs up. Click on the subscribe button. Comment below. All those beautiful things. Also, check out the links that I have in the description of this video for some tarot offerings, including I have the link to the next group tarot reading. If you are a reader at any level and you want to show up with other readers, we get together and we read for each other over Zoom. That's usually on the last Saturday of every month. Go ahead, head to link, see when it is, sign up if you care to. Otherwise, I'm sending you on your way. Please remember we are all free and we are also all connected always at the exact same time. I love you. Hi, beautiful humans. In group number two, you all were drawn to this deck, the new moon tarot. So these are your messages of what's going to happen in your situation. We're taking a look at how it is most likely to work out for you all. We're starting with the tarot and I'm going to get six cards um, and we'll see. In your situation, what is the most likely, there we go, way that it's going to work out for you. Um, what's going to happen? Page of Cups is on the bottom of the deck and I feel you having entered into something with like almost no caution at all. Just like purity of heart, purity of spirit, purity of intention and, and simplicity of emotions. Like the simple thing of like a baby's like, I like this, put it in my mouth, you know? <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, no, <laughs> that's a living worm. Um, <laughs> something like that. Let's take a look at your cards. We have six of pentacles as well as the moon. And then we have the page of wands. Boo. I can say this right now. Um, this feels weird. <laughs> this feels interesting already, your message. Like in order to continue further, you're going to have to touch a little bit more on your wild side. You're going to have to express yourself a little bit further, group two, in that direction. Like be a little bit more zesty. <laughs> spicy, I guess assertive, but more maybe like, mm, I'm just wild. What does that mean to you? Like just more, you know, yeah. Um, hold on. We got more cards. I'm honestly, I'm feeling like this might relate to your personal approach to sexuality. 
and I just want to leave it there and keep it, you know, P PG. Um, we got the Chariot as well as the Knight of Pentacles. Here we go. Something about needing to establish a healthy pattern. And that's what's going to set this all right in your world. Like your situation. You entered into it with this, this like purity and like childlike, you know. Nah. And then it's like. The Six of Pentacles is like you keep giving that and it doesn't really feel like that's coming back to you. It doesn't really feel like you're going to get that in return if you keep just giving that like pure emotional kind of a thing. Um, there's no reciprocity in your situation without something else being included. And it feels like it might have to come through you or from somewhere or someone else but it feels like it's really key to hone in on this missing ingredient of like a kind of like I don't know a different kind of recklessness like a fun one to balance out all of this like do-gooderism I literally feel like a bit of cancel culture kind of like it's just like you know I am a really good person and just like moving forward with do-gooderism. And then that just like, I don't know. <laughs> it can just feel like gross after a while and nobody kind of wants to positively respond to that because that's not the full spectrum of any reality. That's very like Stepford. That's very like toxic positivity kind of a thing. And so then this missing ingredient might be coming through you might be coming through another person, but it's going to ignite this situation a whole lot more and just kind of surge it forward to be able to be worked throughable and worked onable. That's Knight of Pentacles. Your last card is the Five of Pentacles. I'm feeling liberation energy. Like there's a certain, in, in your cards and in the energy surrounding your situation, I feel a certain amount of stuckness. And the stuckness is as a result of uh, virtue signaling or something like that, maybe unintentionally. But like, I am the good one here. You are the bad one. I'm being nice to you. Like it just feels like that's not the thing that will help anything in your situation, what is most likely to occur, what is most likely to happen is sort of this moon energy of seeing through that illusion of like this six of pentacles, like constantly being in giver mode or constantly being in that expectation of receiving mode. It's just work through that, see it for what it is. I really feel like the moon card is also see through the illusions of like literally nobody is good nobody is bad nobody is right nobody is wrong we're all blobs of <laughs> flesh and smells and juices <laughs> we've got needs <laughs> and it's just like rah, sometimes we're angry <laughs> page of wands it just feels like indulge in things a little bit more okay i'm i keep thinking this so i'm gonna mention it years ago <laughs> my bachelor's degree I was studying magazine journalism very specifically and I was a little obsessed with magazines that were focused on getting outdoors and recreation and tourism and things like that and there was one magazine back then I have no clue back then in the days <laughs> I don't know if it's online or it still exists anymore but I think it was called outdoor magazine or outside magazine and they did one issue that confronted my do-gooderism to such a high level that I'm like, fuck this magazine. Um, because the issue was in, was basically, it's all environmental, it's all like ethical and stuff like that, but they did this issue on like your secret little things that you do that are like bad. Um, I'm not saying that right. It's basically like your secret indulgences of being like bad to the environment. And I think on the cover it showed somebody with like a chainsaw, like cutting down trees. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what is this? And yet, right now, I'm recording this video to you all on this table with wood that was cut down. <laughs> 
hopefully regenerative, um, <laughs> harvested responsibly. But regardless, it feels like it's like you have desires. Don't pretend like you don't. And this is definitely talking about the other in your situation as well, or the others. And just literally embarking on that, refreshing yourselves with that, gets you guys moving even further gets you guys flowing into this five of pentacles like I just feel this it's kind of interesting how it's meant to look like these moths are stuck in this jar and you just want to like lift the lid off the jar but the moths aren't even actually in the jar you got this illusion working in your situation and the illusion is going to be busted very thoroughly it's kind of that like you thought you had to behave in certain ways to receive certain benefits or to reach a certain outcome. But what you're going to realize and learn and experience is that no, you do you. Behave in all of the ways. Experience a bit of freedom, this chariot card. Move forward in that kind of mentality with that kind of magic and then build from there. The Knight of Pentacles is such a cool energy to have right here because the Knight of Pentacles doesn't ignore any detail. The Knight of Pentacles is someone who pays attention to like everything that needs to be included in anything that you're trying to create or build or manifest in the physical. It's like you're planning a wedding, every single detail of that wedding needs to be included, including the climate outlook of your venue on the day of. <laughs> like, you know, what will the weather most likely be? And what is backup plan A, B, and C? You know, that guy, that rhymed. <laughs> um, I'm gonna get some more, it's this one, interesting. I'm gonna get some more cards for us right now, but it really feels like you're operating from an energy that is like non-inclusive. Like, it's the vibes of, like, do-gooderism where you're like, I'm so inclusive. But by being, like, you know, obsessively inclusive, <laughs> you're not including when exclusion is beneficial to you. Oh, it's a mindfuck. Total mindfuck. But you, you got it. You got it. You're getting it. You're not limited. None of you are limited. And that's what you're going to realize. And then you can build with that freedom, with non-limitations. You can do and be you. You can cut your hair however you want to. You can get that tattoo. Like, <laughs> you can do what you want kind of thing that's coming through. Receive is your first of these cards. And we did speak about being in receiver mode. Also connected. And then inspiration. Interesting. The most likely thing that is going to happen in your situation is you're going to receive what you didn't want. <laughs> I just have to say what you didn't think that you wanted. Like I said, when I, like that magazine was delivered to my high school home. Nope, nope, I was in college. No, was I in high school? Dang, I don't remember. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, when that issue came, I received that and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like I don't want this I am upset about it and yet that had that domino effect to inspire me to see the world and my situation and everything that I needed to include in on it in a whole different mindset a whole different way a whole different light it's like actually being inclusive <laughs> you know um, I'm getting some more cards for you all and we'll see a bit more about how this is likely to... Oh, there we go. I wanted four cards. Okay, we have Capricorn with Disciplined, Tenacious, and Resilient. I feel like you guys are already aligned with this energy. It's just devoted to certain, like, I want to say almost tactics, although you might not see them as tactics. But again, Page of Cups on the bottom of the deck, it's aligned with a certain amount of virtue. And so then you're like, if I keep going with this, you know, then I will tenaciously <laughs> receive what I'm looking for. Then we have moon void, of course. <laughs> Disconnect, withdrawal, and then we have reception. That word again, receive and reception. It was explained to me by a really cool um, tarot friend that I know, like what moon void, of course, is. 
is when the moon throughout the month moves into different signs, different zodiac signs. And in this like period of a day or a day and a half or something like that, it's called the void of course, where it's kind of not occupying either sign. And it's been noticed that on those days, that's when like it's really bad to try to plan something or it's really bad to like sign contracts on those days or something like that because things might not work out in the way that you had intended. These are your messages. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. Libra, diplomatic, harmony, balance, light and dark, good and bad evil and purity good king bad king <laughs> like all of that all of that narcissist and empath we're all all of it to varying degrees and that feels like you're about to see that and it's going to inspire you what's your last what? look at that to jupiter optimism growth opportunity the magic comes through perceiving the devil as someone who you need, as something that you truly are inside as well. You know, it's not an easy task. I, I developed, when I was really into like creating rituals for myself, I developed a ritual that I called love the devil. And it was like, I, I like I was noticing how judgmental I could be. And I, I used to like think that I was a very pure and non-judgmental and very understanding person. And then I would just be like going through social media, judging, judging, judging. I was like, fuck, I'm horrible. And then anything that I started to judge, even if I just really felt like it was just in direct opposition of my values, I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit down with this and I'm going to look at how I can trace it back, you know, like, like trace it back to how there's a common thread between my behavior and this behavior that I'm thinking is, is the worst. Uh that's pretty big work to do. It's not the easiest thing to do. I mean, it takes you into some, some places that are really, <clears throat> I don't know. I feel better for having done it. And I know you will as well. It's something about if you think you've got like a villain. Um, yeah, it's just this energy of like figuring out how how similar your behavior to that villain might be just coming at it from a different side of this, the spectrum, you know? Yeah. Anyway, we have cultivating prosperity and proceeding softly. That's the idea. I almost want to reverse them because your cards so far have been going in this kind of a timeline of like proceed softly. Um, your inner power grows in moments of quietude. You are going to need to receive something and reflect on it coming from somewhere, some, someone, and or you're going to modify your behavior to be that charge in your situation. Like I was saying with the page of wands and the wildness. So, you know, proceed softly with that because there are lessons to be realized here and to be learned and they're meant to be treated as soft. It's making me think of, you guys know the show. I only watched the first season, the show Mindhunter, I think it's called, but it's about, it's like based on, on, true history and it's about this FBI agent is trying to like understand serial killers and throughout the episodes of the show um like he's confronted by the mentality of like what are you doing trying to understand them they're the devil incarnate why are you spending so much time with them why are you understanding them one of the benefits of doing a ritual like love the devil is that you can understand what creates a devil and then you can understand like <clears throat> a lot. You can understand how to prevent that, maybe. Like, like, yeah. Anyway, I think you guys get it at this point because cultivating prosperity is what you're doing. Um, the abundance of the universe is pouring into my life. And it feels like this is pretty specific for you. Like once you get going, again, with this chariot card, it just felt like magic. Libra, you need this balance of the light and the dark. And then comes the abundance, Jupiter. Then comes this intense amount of prosperity, like optimism, growth, opportunity. You're not challenged by limitations as much as you thought you were. Look at this card, movement. You're going further. The chariot card 
does definitely speak to movement. It speaks very specifically to movement that is in alignment with like your choices, your direction, where you want to head to and things are in balance so you can get moving, you know? You got uh, in a traditional uh, tarot deck, it usually has those like two sphinxes. One is white, one is black. You've got the negative and the positive, the yin and yang. Peace. Peace. <laughs> That's what we're going for. What brings about peace? One of the many things is understanding. <laughs> I mean, that's what you got here. One of the many things is inclusion. Diplomacy. Um, yeah, a lot. Yeah, that's I was like, isn't there that word? Libra, diplomatic. Harmony, balance, realizing how similar we are, you know? Rather than so different and how you're the one who's good and they're bad, you know? Your last two cards for what is likely to occur in your situation. Fall and then we are all connected. <laughs> I mean, you have the message repeated with the, like you have messages repeated in, in several ways in your cards. But the we are all connected thing, the connected thing. First comes the fall of an ideology or a mentality or the way that you were behaving that was that was you were aligned with that you thought was going to bring you to where your harvest was. It has certain amounts of limitations that you might not be seen. Go bold, go big, go wild, paint the town, whatever it might be for you. And again, I just want to throw in pepper in that like, you know, sexual expression kind of a thing that was coming through with that page of wands. And then see, see how you fit into the grand picture. It's kind of funny. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still in my throat. My trachea is still all gross from illness. So I keep having to like do dry coughs and then like clear my throat is gross. Anyway, um, what I was saying with the page of cups, remember how it's like you're a kid and you're like, this is cool. I'll put it on my mouth. This on this, we are all connected card. It's a kid. It was like looking at the world and how it's all connected. It looks like like a kid who's like, have you ever, have you guys ever met a, a like a kid who's like, and you're like, holy shit, that's an old soul. <laughs> like it's like a kid is like already the wisdom of our elders. I've met newborns that are like that. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you for coming here. You're going to teach us all. Um, <laughs> it just really feels like you're going to be a little bit of a wiser kid. Moving forward, you have learned a little bit more about where your territory truly is and where your boundaries are, what you can and cannot get away with <laughs> with your parents and, and, you know, respecting that. I don't know. It just feels like a wizened, you know, freedom kind of energy, a wizened little kid perspective. But yeah, first comes the fall of those ideologies and just, you know, proceeding softly with that. That's what I have for you all, group two. How do you feel? <laughs> oh my god this was like a lesson and a half I kind of want to take this advice as well and kind of go back to the drawing board <laughs> in a lot of ways do my ritual again love the devil okay if this has helped you and if you have liked this reading give it that thumbs up click on that subscribe button comment below also check out the links that I have in the description of this video for some tarot offerings and in including the link that I have to the next group tarot reading it's if you are a reader at any level of any kind of divination tool and you want to get together with other readers over Zoom and we read for each other. So you get to receive a reading and you get to practice giving readings. It's a safe space to practice your intuitive gifts. If that sounds like you, head to the link, see when the next one is. It's usually hosted, I usually host it on the last Saturday of every month. So check that out, sign up. I'd love to see you there. Otherwise, I am sending you on your way. Please remember we are all free and we are also all connected <laughs> always. <laughs> Shit, that's so perfect. At the exact same time. <laughs> I love you. Hi, beautiful humans in group number three. You all were drawn to the Morgan Greer tarot deck. So these are your messages of what's going to happen. What we're looking at is what is the most likely outcome for your situation? What's going to occur? I'm going to start with some cards from your tarot deck that you were drawn to. And we'll see what's going to happen for you. 
Okay, there we go. And on the bottom of the deck, we have the Ten of Cups. Hmm. It feels like you've identified your emotional stability and where it lies in your world right now. It feels like you know what fulfills you to a certain extent, what fulfills your heart space. You know the people who you love, you know, to, to a certain extent, you know. <laughs> it's just like you have identified your emotional heart space pretty well at this point. So, okay, let's see what this is all about. We have the devil card and I'm, I'm feeling like saying, ooh, a challenge, um, <laughs> a challenge to how you have identified your heart space and how you're moving through life. And then we have the fool. Okay, let's see a bit more. We have the 10 of wands as well as the queen of swords and then the knight of swords and the knight of rods okay someone is going to have to respond to you in a positive manner and be guided by your truth or like or else <laughs> i'm feeling like there's some kind of pattern of behavior in 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 your you know your realm of loved ones or something like that there's some kind of pattern of behavior with like, you know, your, your partner or, you know, your best friend or something like that. That's going to like rear its ugly head. And then I feel like what's most likely to occur is you're going to discover with this fool card and the 10 of wands, you're going to discover like very, very quickly how it's putting way too much of a burden on you. And you're going to realize like, oh yeah, no, hell no, we're not doing this. Like, no, <laughs> I'm getting the vibes of somebody like, I don't know, starts to, I'm, I'm trying to think of a really good example, like somebody who you know and love, like they start to go out and party and then you might like try to go out with them and very quickly you realize that like they're, they're kind of running away from how they need to feel in the moment or something like that and they're doing behavior that's a bit toxic to themselves. This Queen of Swords comes out because I feel like this is just you laying down the law of like, no, this compromises me, this compromises you, we're going to have to do differently and you're going to need to respond to this or otherwise it's too heavy of a burden on me in this connection right now. Like I cannot do what you're asking us to do. And then this Knight of Swords, Knight of Rods is I feel them responding in the positive to this. I feel them doing corrective behavior. I feel them understanding. I feel them hearing it, learning from it and taking on what would be like the better path to be able to be connected with you still, to be able to be aligned with you in truth and in harmony. This literally feels like some kinds of energies of emotional detachment. It feels like going into a direction that's not like true for them. And again, what I was sensing with the Ten of Cups on the bottom of the deck, and now that the Queen of Swords is here, is like, you know exactly what is true for you. This feels like you might hit a point in your relationship where, like, the burdens, it, it's just something is burdening you. Like, maybe their emotional detachment is creating this, like, burden on you to have to, like, chase them. Like they're being avoidant. So then you feel the power, like discrepancy in that. And it, it like, um, like if someone's avoidant, it tends to like draw power from the person they're connected with to like chase them. That's a game. That's a game to play. And you're not playing any fucking games. <laughs> oh, not at all. I feel like you might indulge in it a little and see how you feel. See if it's actually what you're thinking that it is. And then once that that, that Queen of Swords comes out and it rings true, then you're like, oh, okay, yeah, shit. Yeah, no, this is exactly what I thought it was. We're not doing this. I'm not doing this. Like, you, you have to shift this. You can't keep doing this. We can't keep being connected here if you're going to do that. Like, I won't do that to myself. Like, you have a high regard for yourself. You have a high self-respect, a high self-knowing. Okay, your next two cards, we have Awaken and Release. And that's exactly what I've seen. Like, you're going to awaken to the reality of this, like, kind of energetic deficit kind of a thing that we've got going on and showing itself with, the, you know, what, what I just said. Um, 
And then with the Queen of Swords, you're going to, in a very pure intention, very clear spoken. And, and I almost feel like well-delivered kind of a way, communicate to your partner or this other or whomever we're talking about here that something has to change. That behavior, the devil card energy, has to be released. And then the burden gets to be lifted because I feel like this other is behaving or acting in those kinds of ways because they might not know any better. And in this kind of a way, your energy gets to charge them with a certain amount of like reflection energy, seeing themselves in the mirror and harmonizing with how you treat yourself well. Group three, you treat yourselves well. You Like I was saying, you know what is emotionally fulfilling. You do self-care practices. Like you love yourself to, to have this kind of self-honor and self-awareness and self-respect of like, ow, no, that hurts. I'm not doing it. Like, no, I, I'm treating myself well and I'm not going down that path of not treating myself well. Um, just expressing that. Like I say that because this queen of swords, I'm not going to lift the cards up because they're so straight. It's deeply satisfying to me right now. <laughs> Sorry. You all who follow me know I have issues <laughs> with the cards needing to be straight. Um, there's like what looks like right here on her throat chakra or on her voice box right here is like what looks like a pearl. And I just feel like well-intentioned and well-delivered truth, clarity, and, and like statements to this other about like you're going to need to have to do this or otherwise we can't connect it just feels like wisdom coming through like perfectly said okay we have cancer with nurturing sensitive and caring we are already identifying that about you <laughs> you're already that way for yourself and you are willing to be that way for the other in your situation and try out whatever it is that they're they're asking for or doing here and be with them in it, but it's not going to work because you are full of love. Um, we have square with competition, tension, and disharmony. Yes. Pokey. Pokey. There are pokey things involved. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> there is disharmony. There is tension. And you are the one. You are the one who will set it all right. You are the one who will speak the truth of that awareness. And then we have supermoon with luminosity, intimacy, hyper awareness fuck yes you're cool you're very cool i like you guys i like you guys a lot group three you you, you get to be the super moon that shines the light on your, your situation here and illuminates it for this other person like because i feel like it involves your ability to be intimate with this other person any kind of intimacy we're not needing to talk about sexual intimacy and this doesn't need to be another person it can be a pet or an animal it can be anything you know you already know already what we're talking about um but yeah intimacy just in general is reliant upon this devil card kind of thing not being there so the strategy of theirs has to change it has to be released and and let go of and i think they want to i think you're bringing about this hyper awareness that they're kind of ready to claim and ready to take on we got two warrior kind of knight of swords, knight of rods. They're really going to get it and they really want to do something about it. They like you. Um, and then we have sixth house. How nice. Work, service, health. I feel like that last word especially because I feel like this is a health pattern for each other, yourself. You are healthy in, in this area and they're going to pick up on that and they want health as well. They want health as well. They're just following some kind of behavior, some kind of pattern that isn't truth. It isn't in alignment. We, we all know this. We know this. And then the work that you are going to do is honor that and then be of service to this reality. Like uphold your boundaries of like in the form of like we, we can't have intimacy if you're going to be doing this. Like in order to have intimacy, you can't do that, whatever that is, you know, you can't do that behavior. We have to be able to connect, you know, and then comes this like work of healing, work of behaving differently, being of service to each other. It feels really nice. Okay. Standing firm. Oh my God, your cards are so synchronous, aren't they? I am noble, brave, and strong. 
you. <laughs> this is you, your truth, standing firm, not violating yourself. I see you all engaging with it. If you already have and you already know this truth, then cool. <laughs> this is confirmation. Stand firm, deliver it, trust, letting go. We've got the release card and we have letting go. Oh, this is so perfect because this is what I see them, the them doing. I surrender joyously to the ebbing and flowing of life. Right now I'm thinking of an example with a pet. Like if you've recently adopted a stray that's like really scared of humans or something like that. And you're working on like, you know, getting, getting them to be like comfortable with you. This might be like them, I don't know, like choosing to bark at you constantly and you're like no we can't continue with that and you're gonna kind of like stand firm and whatever I don't know I don't know you guys probably know what we're talking like animals <laughs> animal psychology is what I, I'm thinking of I feel like once the other knows that they're safe with you by what you represent through your behavior then they literally can let go of what they thought would be protecting them or what they thought would be the thing for them and they, I feel this surrender literally joyously. I feel like kind of like a dog who knows that they're finally safe. Then they just like fall completely in love with that human, you know? Oh, God, that's so nice. Um, I'm getting two more cards for you guys. Um, this is like just so pure and so powerful. I really like your messages. Abundance and sweetness. <laughs> I was saying, like, I, again, I'm feeling this energy of trust yourselves. Again, I'm just going to repeat that. You already know this. You already know you got it. You know the abundance path for you when it comes to, I'm hearing reputation. I don't know why, that word specifically. You know your abundance path for your own personal reputation. Ten of Cups. What is that? Yes, you had to learn a thing or two of what is not emotionally fulfilling. You know a thing or two about somebody maybe trying to take you down or somebody maybe trying to have you put up with less than who you are. Like, you know a thing or two about intimacy and what builds it. Yeah. And so then this is kind of defying like previous laws of gravity or logic. I'm channeling those words. This feel a little bit poetic in storytelling. Um, and going in your direction of what you know builds that kind of kindness that kind of connection that kind of emotional fulfillment it's a kind thing that you are doing for this other it is a kindness to show them a bit of what you have built in terms of your emotional abundance in terms of your communal abundance your connectedness abundance who you choose to hang around and why and what you choose to thrive in emotionally Oh, this is so nice. Okay, your last three cards. We have food, make good choices. Look at this card. It's all about healthy choices and feeling so fucking joyous about it. This is one of my favorite cards in this deck. I talk about it every time it comes out because it's just like, look at his face. He's eating black beans. It looks like dry ass black beans and cucumber <laughs> and bread and olive oil. And literally, you guys, for me at this point in my life, this would be one of the happiest meals. I would like literally love this. <laughs> I am so boring. Like I would just like take some of that bread, put some olive oil on it, put some of those black beans and the cucumber and I'd just be like, this is so good for me. Um, That's me. <laughs> you are you. You know what feeds. You know what health is. Express it. Oh, the animals card. It's all about standing at center attention and expressing what it is that you know. Look at this fairy. She's teaching the other creatures. She's showing them her magic. She's showing them what she has learned to do. And they're all paying attention. Creatures. And then we also have company. There we go. You and that cat. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if this entire time we've been talking about a pet. I would fucking love to know that. Um, <laughs> you and the cat that hates you. <laughs> it's not going to hate you. You're going to teach it a thing or two. <laughs> oh, but this is the objective. Establishing harmony and intimacy through the awareness of what is healthy in these areas. 
you've got it, you know how, you're going to show it and teach it and this other is just going to fucking love you for it and get even closer to you as a result. So yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. That's what I have for you all, group three, or I almost want to say that's what you have for us. That's what you have to give you and me. So thank you. Thank you for clicking on this video. This is why I got to read your energy and I just appreciate you being born and living through what you've lived through so that you get to know this and you get to share it with us. So thank you. If you like this video, this reading, if it has helped you, give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment below. Also check out the links that I have in the description of this video for some tarot offerings, including the link that I have to the next group tarot reading. If you are a reader of, a, of tarot or any kind of divination tool, oracle decks, it doesn't matter. Grab your deck, grab, uh, bring a question that you want to receive a reading on because basically we all gather together over Zoom and we read for one another. So you get to practice giving readings and trusting your intuition and you get to receive a reading from several different readers all at one time. It's very beneficial. It's very wonderful and useful. I love doing it. It's my favorite thing to do with this channel. If that sounds like something you want to do, head to the link and see when the next one is. It's usually on the last Saturday of any given month. So head to that, sign up if you want to. Otherwise, I'm sending you on your way. Please remember we are all free and we are also all connected always at the exact same time. I love you. Hi, beautiful humans in group number four. You all were drawn to the modern way tarot. So these are your messages all about what's going to happen. So basically we're looking at the most likely outcome of your situation. I'm starting with some tarot cards. Um, I'm gonna get one more. I don't know why I felt like drawing them like, wow, well, okay, like that. But okay, <clears throat> we will see. What's going to happen for you all? Bottom of the deck energy, we have the Queen of Swords, which is letting me know that you've had a truth shared or two, which is likely to shake things up and also protect people. I do like when, in, in certain decks, I've started to notice, God, I've, I've been doing tarot for years. I've done thousands of tarot readings. And then I see like, this is more of like a traditional Rider weight deck, but in certain decks, it shows like almost like a drop off behind the throne of this of a queen of swords and it's sort of like you better share the truth because if you don't there's danger it's literally like somebody doesn't want to stop and take care or be cautious so then you might feel like you can't share a truth of like there, there there's a cliff that you're about to walk off you know, but it's in those kinds of moments that you have to realize the truth literally is what this person requires, even if they don't want to hear it. Like you, you have to tell them or otherwise they fall off a cliff and they die, you know, kind of thing. I feel like you guys have had to face that kind of energy. And that's what we're working with right now is that you've had to share a truth that's like that, that somebody didn't want to hear or know, but literally had to be shared. So, okay, let's see. We've got the four of pentacles as well as the death card. And then we have the Ace of Pentacles. I'm going to get all the cards because I'm seeing a story unravel here. And then we have the Queen of Pentacles as well as Temperance um, and the Ten of Pentacles. Okay, they will be returning to you. Yes, whoever the they is that we're talking about here. They need to go their own way because they're more miffed about the challenge of your truth than about the pros posterity and the protection that your truth was providing for them. They don't see it quite clearly yet. They feel like whatever it was that was your truth was undermining their bottom line. We've got that with the four of pentacles. And so then it feels like they may have ended a thing or two or they're going to end a thing or two. Like if you haven't shared these truths with them and I just feel like your expectation of a negative outcome coming from them, like they're not gonna like it, you're, it's looking like that's true. They're not going to like it, but I have to say at first, it feels like you're in a position where you, you value yourselves enough to like keep committed to growing, you know, you doing you, the patterns of investment in your own abundance, your own powers, your own abilities. 
I feel like you might have shared something with someone about like what not to do. And I feel like what you have in front of you is the challenge of doing what to do and showing how that works. Yeah, how do you guys feel about that? Because I feel like this person is just gonna kind of like cut it in a certain kind of way and it's not necessarily gonna feel really great. Um, but then we have the Ace of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. You're going to grow into an established position that is undeniable doing doing that truth or doing what you know is good or would be good and you're going to do it to such an extent that you're going to prove the concept and then they're coming back this feels exhausting <laughs> i'm gonna get two more cards um the temperance and the ten of pentacles is that like they don't trust you they don't trust you right now they will trust you when they see um how you fortify your your truth or your awareness or your 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 intelligence they really want to see the proof of it um before they step into it and hold it and embrace it and utilize it as well they're just angry that you told them about the cliff yeah but they're they're rejoining you and this ten of pentacles is like i feel like you guys are all gonna be like a little bit water under the bridge forgive you know and like it's better together like family kind of vibes or like soul matey kind of thingies <laughs> like like you guys are gonna have to go through this trust the process trust your organizational skills trust your intelligence trust your abilities because you're going to prove it to them and then they're coming right back around and they're going to like energize themselves with whatever it is that you're showcasing and then it's all joining back together into the future. That's Ten of Pentacles. It's all coming in together and being even bigger and brighter and better. Okay, your next two cards, step by step and unfolding. This is a process. Every step of it is important because it is unfolding, unfolding your proof your mastery, your mastery of concept maybe, or of self, you have to allow the time that it takes and the steps that are required to be able to unfold yourself. And then once you get there, they gravitate toward it, toward you to be with you. It's almost like, honestly, I'm not, I, I, I'm not feeling too happy about them. Right now, I like, I don't like <laughs> how they are treating you, but at the same time, in the future, that's all going to be fine. They're going to understand in such a way and come to you, come back to you in such a way that they're already incorporating your intelligence. They're already seeing it. They're already doing it. It's going to be very, very, very easy to allow them back in, to let it all harmonize, to cooperate together again. We have um, first house with self, body, and presence. And this is what you have to claim. This is what you are confronting in them. They might have that tragedy inside of them that tells them that they have to be right or else they are wrong. And if they are wrong, then they cannot do that. <laughs> um, and so then it's like yourself, your body, your presence is in direct confrontation with theirs because you're showing a truth that conflicts with what they've established so far for themselves. We have Chiron, core wounds. This is deep. This is deep for you. This is deep for them. Vulnerability. And look at those last words. Poten potential. Poten pot oh my God. <laughs> potential through pain yes step by step you will grow you're going to have to grow arguably without them without their encouragement without that being there whatever it is you know the connection in some kinds of ways you're gonna need to heal and grow through that learn adapt and so are they and then we have pisces psychic intuitive dreamy um, I could say a lot about this energy and, and being sensitive and sensitizing. I feel like they are going to have to go on their own journey. You're going to have to go on your own journey. And maybe in a lot of ways, you'll be able to psychically perceive them and they'll be able to psychically perceive you the entire time. 
and that connection will still be there. It kind of doesn't even need to be... I like how science is backing this up a whole lot. At this point in time, there have been enough experiments with, uh, what is it called? Entanglement? Quantum entanglement? Like, we get it. <laughs> we know that it's not just like pseudoscience. This stuff is like you can sense someone, you can feel someone. Like how a mother just intuitively knows about her child or something like that. Like those m miracles of knowing are right here in how this is likely to unfold. And then the last of these cards is Medium Coeli, Midheaven or Midheaven, Direction, Reputation. Jesus. The MC is like the pinnacle, like the top of your success, the top of your career, the top of your, your game, top of your abilities. Take charge and it will happen for you. And it's kind of like when you are there and you've built a reputation by being there, that's when your direction that you're trying to express to someone will be motivated by this kind of like undeniability. It's almost like they need it to be proven in order to adapt to it. They're not likely to take any chances. Ugh, the Four of Pentacles. Ah, uh, yeah, they're just very um, structured and strict with their, their self and their material world. Um, yeah, your next two cards. Um, it just doesn't feel really nice right now. <laughs> Letting go. Yes, that that is what is likely to occur. Um, I surrender joyously to the ebbing and flowing of life. I mean, everything in, in these cards is saying they're going to come back around. The timetable for this, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I could try to read into that. We've got first house and Pisces and Aries showing up and March, April, March, April. How do you feel about that? I don't know. I'm not very good at giving calendar time. I'm more about alignment time. And here we go. We've got being in the flow. I am in the flow of the universe. Like it just really feels like that surrender to the flow of this process, the unfolding and every step counts. Every step matters. If it takes a while, it takes a while. Some steps will be super, super quick and skillful. Um, some others will be like easy yet take time. You know, you might have to like learn a thing or two, but once you get it, then you get going but yeah, it just really feels like the whole entire thing that we're talking about here is a process that is kind of divinely led and it's meant to come back around and it's meant to feel really, really, really fucking good when it does come back around. I feel like like me as your reader, I'm kind of lost in this part of it and it doesn't feel really good. So then when we get here, I'm, I'm like having a hard time like fully being in it to where it will feel good, but all of your cards are saying it's gonna feel really good because they're they're going to be charged up with this change, with it with this temperance energy, this this calm, this balance, this realization, the, this like continuation kind of a thing. Yeah, okay, we have creativity and we also have protection. It feels like um these are the two opposing opposing. What did I say? <laughs> Potential opposing. What is all this? I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't know what that is. Um, the two uh, opposing. I can't even do this anymore. The two opposing forces going on here. You represent creativity. They represent like protection. Like you represent something that would be new. They represent like holding fast to what already is. Um, again, the Chiron with core wounds. This is something that's not simple. It's something that's very deep. This is something that like, you know, what people say about like, you know, these kinds of karmic relationships or like, uh, what are the other ones? Like counterparts or things like that, you know, like we're brought together for a reason so that we can bond and we can see how to build something new with protection involved that's queen of pentacles queen of pentacles sits in this position to where she gives from a place of abundance and i think like this other person 
in your situation, they doubt that that is even fucking possible. But you're going to invest in it. You're going to invest exactly in that. And you're going to show them how it is possible. And then you're going to show them how protection can happen through your creative new method. Um, God, this feels really huge. Okay, I'm getting your last two cards. Oh my God, your cards are so synchronous. Like, honestly, I don't know why I'm so like emotionally involved in <laughs> parts of your reading rather than like the, the loveliness or something like that. But here are two cards just to hammer home that the loveliness is a guarantee. I mean, nothing is a guarantee in life, but regardless, of, I mean, we're looking at the most likely outcome of your situation. First comes the winter, then comes the spring. First comes the allowance of certain things need to be challenged by that death card. Certain things need to fall away. Certain things need to be absent before they are flourishingly present. Before they are bountiful, abundant, prosperous, and new. Before they are fully showing the way of what is to come in the summer, 10 of pentacles, when things really get going, really become vibrant and connected and thriving. First comes that letting go. Yeah, and trusting the process. I just really feel like give it, give it six months, give it two seasons, you know? Harmonize with that timeline as best as you can. I'm really trying to give you guys a timeline. <laughs> but okay, I'm done. That's it. Group four. How do you feel? <laughs> you know how I feel. Okay. <laughs> if you like this reading, if it has helped you with your situation, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Click on that subscribe button, comment below, share all those kinds of things. Also check out the links that I have in the description of this video for some tarot offerings, including the link to the next group tarot reading. If you are a reader of tarot or divination tools, oracle decks, does not matter, and you want to gather together with other readers, bring your tool of choice and bring a question that you'd like to receive a reading on because we all join together over Zoom and we read for one another. It's a really cool, really safe space to practice, to lean into your arts and your psychic gifts, your intuition, and also receive, 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 okay? If that sounds like something you want to do, check out the link, see when the next one is. It's usually host, I usually host it on the last Saturday of every month. Love to see you there. Um, otherwise, I'm sending you on your way. Please remember we are all free and we are also all connected always at the exact same time. I love you. Hello again, vibrant people. I like to show you guys the decks that I use in every reading in the order that I use them in. So here you go. In case you're curious, these are the four tarot decks. And then I'm going to show you the oracle decks that I use in the order that I use them in, starting with this one. These are... <laughs> I just had a list. Um, these are those little um, circle astrology cards. And then this oracle deck this one and then i finished off every reading with these ones okay i love you guys enjoy yourselves and each other <laughs>